Welcome to the morning meeting for January 22nd, 2024. It is a Monday. We're starting off into a new week. Let's take a look at the calendar first. Today, there's literally nothing going on. Tomorrow, Tuesday, nothing going on. Wednesday, not much. Smaller things should not really move the markets that much. Some energy stuff is being released. Thursday, durable goods orders and GDP, so a little bit. Some initial jobless claims will be released. So there's, there's already something, you know, just not dramatic, but a little bit. And then on Friday, it's core PC, right? And then personal income, personal spending. Those numbers are going to be important. So essentially, we can argue that the market will be waiting for the rest of the week, for Friday in particular, a little bit of a primer maybe to set the mood on Thursday. But today, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's just really, the, the market is left to its own devices basically. There's not gonna be that much input uh, coming from, from the news front. Let's take a look at the monthly chart here in the ES. Um, I do that every week, basically. Um, you can see that we had a swing high here. A swing high is defined by having lower highs to the left and to the right of a candle. So I think this was the high here. Then you can see that here. Then there's follow through here. But then price action doesn't really continue to go down more. They actually start reversing as of November last year. This is when the big upswing started. At this point down here, when I was doing the Kula Maggi setup candidates um, screening, there were literally no performers. Like there was not a single stock um, besides some acquisition games, some pharmaceutical biotech stocks that had like, you know, really like their own dedicated stories. There was nothing else in the broader market showing up at all. Like there were no performance leaders. Um, we were also at a very low level with anything in terms of price action, the S&P 500 stocks being above a 20-day moving average, a 50-day moving average, etc. So even though you cannot really see it here that much, the market was just really sort of empty, right? There was not really anything performing. And that all changed uh, with early November, right? So this was kind of an extreme, even though it's not that visible here. Um, it doesn't you know, seem to be extreme at all. But when you do these exercises and you look at the breadth of the market um, and just see what are the, the best performers, you don't find any, then you might be at a low, at a potential swing low. You don't see that in the monthlies here per se right away, but you could see these things on a daily chart as, as there was a swing low forming. And then obviously, um, since we look at a monthly chart here, things take much, much longer. And then you can see now there's the swing low, right? This is the this is a low, and then to the left there's a higher low, to the right there's a higher low, and there's a follow through here, confirmation of the swing. And so far in January, um, we have been continuing to the upside. So the market is very quickly approaching these um, all-time highs. But if you look at something like the Spider ETF, we already took out those historical highs. If you look at the Qs, it's the same thing. If you look at the Diamonds, it's the same thing. If you look at IWM, though, it's not the same thing. So the smaller stocks are still in this trading range. Um, maybe they will be catching up. But for now, they're just still going sideways. They have not taken out all time highs. Okay, so it depends on where you look, right? If you look here on the futures, you will think that we haven't taken them out. And they will still be important levels here for the contracts, for the price action here. But you can see how close we are in the NQ to take out this high, right? So the high here was exactly at 17,700 and here we are like 120 points away now. So it's very likely that we will take out the high here in the futures contracts. 
Accordingly, um, DAO had a high at 38263. We are still missing 100 points as well. So this will happen quickly, most likely. And then again, RTY doesn't do that. RTY is, is different. RTY is an important index, even though many people don't trade as index, because it can tell us about the um, potential next bull, bull market, the real bull market. What we have seen now is price going up, yes. You can make a lot of money with price going up. But if you're waiting for a real bull market, a real cycle, you need to see the small stocks being a part of the rally. And they are not. They're just not. They're just going sideways like this. It's been going on for two years now. All right, so this is just, you know, for the sake of orientation, we know we are close to taking out highs. We have done it in the ETFs for the most part. Um, you know, so that's that's where we are. This is a bullish environment. There's no doubt about it. If you look at the weekly chart, also interesting, you can see here we had a red candle. We then took out the high of the red candle. That's a typical trend continuation signal. Very simple price action. And then it just continues up. There's follow through here. And so far with the new week, we have also just been trending higher. We didn't really do anything else, right? So in Q, same thing. YM is a little bit more mixed, but still we are building new highs here, right? Ever so slightly, but we are building them. This is just a sideways move. It's all it is. Because the, the DAO is just not that strong. And talking about not being that strong, obviously, the Russell that has actually put in a swing high that was already in December, follow through then in the first week of January, and then we have been going sideways ever since. You know? The RTY right now, if I go to a daily chart, or maybe we can even look at an hourly chart, it's in an, let's look at an hourly chart. It's, it's kind of in an interesting spot. There are lots of levels for today. So one thing in is that last week's high is this black line. So we might get there pretty quickly. These are daily gaps here. Um, and it's been, you know, respecting them more or less, but it seems that price is now starting to turn. You can see there are extension levels from Friday, Friday's session, extending up FIP ranges here to 1272, which we already hit earlier today. We are now on its way to retest them, then we might um, touch the last week's high, then we might reach 1414 and we'll see what happens after that. There is um, this trend here that price action is trying to break out of. So once it gets through all this stuff here, um, it might actually continue also more to the upside. We'll, we'll see what it does. There's a whole range here of highs that are very close together. The market has a tendency to test those levels. And that is what I call a weekly across. So on the weekly chart, you know, this is still a high overall that, you know, has not been covered by a body of a candle on the weekly chart. So this might become interesting here as we can, as we approach this level, if we approach the level. Some uh, support here is kind of starting to come into play with this trend line. For that, just take a look at the line line chart so just the closing prices whenever you can cleanly connect things ideally of course three times so this is just the first idea um, we might get support along this line if we fail so that's the story about that i'm just going to go back to a daily chart here so we can do the same exercises with the monthly and with the weeklies here in the Russell, we can see there's a swing low, there's the follow through, so that suggests bullish price action. YM, it's basically going sideways, but nevertheless, you will see there's a swing low here as well. Follow through already happened today. And Q, also a bit more difficult to see. You, you basically have to date back um, the swing low here to early January. So this is really where the swing low was. There was a bit of dynamic here. 
which gives us a bit more information. You know, and then obviously here, nothing much happened here for a few days. But then you can make a point that this might be another swing low. And then the S is the same thing, right? So everything is bullish. It's, it's really what it is. Except for the, the Russell, you have to be a bit more cautious. But everything else looks really bullish right now. Maybe it's already getting too bullish. We'll, we'll see. Right? Um, the VIX is at 13.5. That's still a very low level. DXY. Let me show my drawings again. Is going up. But the market is also going up. right? So... If we go up more, it doesn't necessarily mean the market is going to weaken. This is not a set in stone correlation. This could be a target here, the 618, and then maybe ease back and give potentially even more strength to the markets. But we'll see if that's really true. What I find more interesting is the Euro USD. This has a butterfly harmonic pattern that's been working very well, been chopping around a little bit, and the error here suggests we might actually go down to 107 right so those are the ideas and that wouldn't be that great for for stocks but as you can see the equities are actually doing something else right so the s is going up last three days the q is going up then you can see that the dxy is just basically going sideways it, it doesn't really have the same strength of moves that you would expect but also the euro is not really that strong, right? If it wants to follow um, the price action in magnitude that we see in the equities, this is quite disappointing, right? This is still pretty, just going sideways essentially. What else can we say? Um, let's take a look at um, hourly charts here. And go to the S. So if there's not much input today um, coming from the macro front, the news front, we might not really do much. We might just continue to chop up a little bit more, grind up. Um, I don't have conviction to short at these extensions because we are very slowly and con in a controlled fashion, we are approaching 1 to 7 to be almost there. I would not want to short this. Um, price needs to be dynamic, hitting those levels. It's not dynamic here. Um, if the pre-market had been more aggressive and jammed right into 1414, maybe this could have been an interesting reversal play. I don't think, since we didn't see that, that this will be any good for the regular session either. Right? When price is sluggish at 1272, typically 1414 will also not do that much to the price. Exceptions apply, but as a rule of thumb, we can probably suggest that this might not necessarily be a turning point. But right? it's been very, very strong Friday, and they're just holding up those price levels. Same in the NQ. We are already at one two seven two again. We were there earlier today, and the one four one four is just a little bit higher again. I don't see anything much to do here, even though there's confluence with certain levels spanning across here from you know old highs on the futures uh, contract. Again, the difference between the ETFs that already taken out historical highs um, and the futures who have not done that yet but are really close to doing it. Right? This is really this is the historical high here in in the futures contracts. This level. And I think we can easily go there and just take that all out. So looking at reversal place here is probably not a good idea. I'm not going to do that today. This is an idea for the YM. It's it's very early. Again, if, if the other stuff keeps rallying and they want to take out higher levels, I I don't see a reason why the YM wouldn't do that, you know, at least in terms of like in terms of a tendency to also go higher. And then it's the same issue. Um, here, the extensions are a little bit further away. Maybe that more, makes it a little bit more interesting, but still, you know, you got to be careful. This here was an early idea from today. Maybe we get, you know, a cipher pattern because this is a pretty good 
looking flip extension move up into the last week's high but as you can see we're just you know going sideways in pre-market nothing has really moved here and um so this might not come to fruition but i'll leave it in here in case we get a surprise drop then this down here at 786 might be a level to look at there's plenty of structure here um, for a bounce so we'll see and then rty we already looked at that it's kind of um you know really caught between levels you have fib extensions you have last week's high you have daily gaps you have a 200 um, simple moving average which i have added to all my charts why because it can give you additional interesting levels maybe not so much on an hourly chart that's really more for you know acknowledging what's going on but if you go into smaller time frames you can find very nice reversal um, plays at a 200 moving average why is that well it's just simply what is being used in the market everybody knows about the 200 moving average it's probably different with a 150 moving average right it's different with a 89 exponential moving average or whatever you want to pick but people also they know about a 50 moving average right they know about a 20 moving average 20 50 and 200 are well-known moving averages so price will most likely respond to hitting um a moving average like that i don't want to take it to um you know like the, the extent that cooler maggie is using uh, moving averages he uses 20 50 100 150 200 250 um i'm not i'm not interested in that i, I just want to use the one that is really most meaningful and that i think is the 200 right okay so that's why that's here so it's it's caught between all these levels right the 200 could give it support the daily gaps might repel it the last week's high might repel it the extensions might repel it you know it's just like um you know like it's just like um a ball just jumping you know back and forth up and down you know, it's like ping pong basically so you know if if we break it yes then we can go down to 618 or something there's an alert here maybe we'll find support at this at this you know forming potential trend line so this is interesting um but that's that's pretty much it we just have to wait and see what it wants to do for now there's there's nothing to do here all right so um, i'm going to look at some pre-market stuff i'm not going to look at the finris stuff anymore jesse stein we've been doing this now for eight months there's just absolutely no setup coming out of this that meets the basics the absolute basics of this criteria that's just nothing um i'm not going to do that anymore the unusual volume that we are looking at from the previous day is essentially just the previous day so we might as well look what we do anyways on the current day in pre-market and just look here at market chameleon and you know get a nice list of stocks that, that are in play i think that makes way more sense i looked at these already um, the China stocks are down again. You can see the Yang ETF, which is the bear ETF, is up. So um, that's not good for China stocks. Um, the DVAC Trump thing, I'm not interested in personally, but a lot of people trade it. A lot of people have made tons of money with it. But you need to know what you're doing, right? Um, SMCI is back on the board. I posted um, a beautiful opening play in it um, last week you could you could make tons of money with this thing it was absolute textbook absolutely beautiful uh, just go to the community tab there's a screenshot there it's just absolutely amazing this is how you have to play um these stocks in play you know when you can draw clean trend lines in, in pre-market you know it's institutionally controlled and then they just you know pushed it up like 30 percent. so this is amazing this thing is just a rocket right now. Decliner side, I don't see much here. Um, Archer Daniels is kind of going down. Um, why is that? Pre-market session. Cuts earnings guidance. 
Yes, so they're already doing that ahead of earnings, it seems. So the market hates that, obviously. That's a $60 stock that's down 12%. There's nothing wrong with it. There's a catalyst. That's fine. It could have more volume. I mean, we can look at ADM, but I doubt it will have that much liquidity in pre-market. So let's take a look at a one-minute chart. Yeah, not, not that terrible. We are really interested in line charts and we want to see some level where it can break lower but where would that be you know if you look at the um, the pre-market action so far i don't think there's much to draw here really you know we have a low here if that gets broken then maybe it goes lower but you know I, I don't see anything if you compare this with scmi this is the drawing i still have it in here look at this right this is what we should see in pre-market this was bullish though, right? ADM is bearish. You know, very controlled trend channel with at least three cleanly connecting points. And then it starts breaking out even before the open. And then of course the open will take out the lows, right? So if you go back to a candlestick chart, you can see the open here. The first, very first thing they do is they take out the lows of pre-market. So obviously you cannot have your stop here. Uncle Joe will put a stop here because he's dumb and that's when he gets taken out for a few cents or a few dollars or what that is and then it turns around and just roars higher, right? So that's that's not something you can do. What you can do is you will buy when the low gets taken out and maybe a little bit lower than that. You can see here how beautifully the trend line is being, I mean this is a joke. This is so, so textbook. You can print that right now. Um, it touches the trend line above, then it reverses. If you put your stop down here below the lower trend line at three, what is the, was it, 333, 334, something, and then you bought $4 higher, you know, at 340 or what it was, man, look at what it did after this, right? Crazy. It went up $60. $60 within an hour. So this is the stuff where you can make serious money in. All right. So that's basically it. I, I don't see anything here. I don't think ADM is, has any good setup or anything. So, uh, and then the other stuff here, um, I'm more interested also to, to see some earnings, but you know, this, this stuff has to move, right? We cannot just use stuff that moved 5% pre-market on 25,000 shares. Um, on, yeah, on 25,000 shares. That's just not enough, right? You can see a lot of China stocks, obviously, here also on the bearish side. Um, you know, like XPEF is here. Um, I don't know this Billy thing. Is that Chinese? I don't know. LI is definitely Chinese. Baidu is here, Edu, Neo, uh, JD might also be, I don't know what JD is, and if it's Chinese or whatever, KWeb is here, that's another ETF, right? So all these, these China stocks, they're getting pretty good beating. You can look at KWeb just for informational purposes here, weekly chart. This is where we're at. So if anybody is like, oh, let's just buy some China stocks. I guess many people have tried that in the past to bottom fish here. The problem of, with China stocks is, is still the same. They are Chinese stocks. The accounting, the auditing, um, the influence of, of the Chinese government, um, party policies, right? Um, this is not a free market. This is not, you know, anything that you can expect from like an American stock, right? Or European stock for that matter. This is, you know, this is, this is the squaring of a circle, right? That's still what China is, right? They want to have like a free, sort of free economy advantages, but it's supposed to be communist, right? So, um, you have to be very careful with China stocks. Very, very careful. That's all I can say.
There are a lot of retail traders out there who are like, let's buy the dip, China stocks, China doesn't stop to exist, China's growing, China's this, China's that. No. China actually has serious issues. China is not the workbench of the world anymore for most part. Uh, that's shifting to even cheaper countries. China has reached a certain level you know, of, of life, life quality for fairly large portions of its population. Um, you know, it's, it's what it is, right? This is, this is old. This is an old growth story. This is like Tesla now. This is an old growth story. So don't get, don't get fooled into still thinking about China's booming. It's not. China has serious trouble with real estate speculation. Um, China is a communist regime. That's what it is. So I, I would not touch this stuff. And besides, the chart right now looks absolutely horrible. Does it have to break lower? Not necessarily. This can just be taking out, you know, the shelf here, just fake it out and then reverse and chop around or maybe go up. I don't know. But, you know, this is not a nice chart, right? And the whole fundamentals behind it are just garbage. Like this thing has not moved for a year. Not moved for a year. There's way better stuff out there to play and speculate on rather than this Chinese stock crap. The Chinese have listed so many companies in the U.S. They all went from super high levels down basically to zero. They were just extracting the capital out of the IPO. And then that's it. It's, it's a golden handshake. They just sell shares in something uh, that is polished enough to, to get the IPO. And then Joe Blow buys it, says it's a dynamic China stock and China's growth and all that crap. And then it, it deflates. It's like, a, it's like a balloon where you let all the air out. It just goes boom, and that's it. And they do it intentionally. IPOs are golden handshakes, even for American and European stocks. Um, you have to be very skeptic about one question why do companies get listed why why do they go public why how many companies that went public over the last 20 or 30 years are still listed and are still making money there are very few very few i say that every now and so often if you run a stock screener here in trading view It's here. This is the profitable universe, right? Let's run it. 480 companies are profitable. They're making money. How do I how do I assess that? Let's take a look at the filters. So common stock ADR, market cap at least 250 million, and they should trade half a million shares a day above five dollars. That's that's not much of an obstacle, is it? They have to have the return on equity, which means they make money, right? Price to free cash flow has to be above zero, right? So there has to be free cash flow. There has to be a net margin in what they do. Products they make, services they offer, they have to make money with it. They have to, be, have, to have a positive margin. Price to earnings ratio, right? The PE has to be above zero if you make money. The debt to equity ratio, I don't want companies that are heavily indebted, right? They should have a somewhat healthy debt level. That's why the 1.2 here is, as, as a threshold should be less than that, should be below it, right? Operating margin. Maybe you don't have a good net margin, but you have an operating margin. Should be above zero. That's all it is. This is very basic business stuff. If a company makes money and is not highly indebted and is somewhat liquid and trades over $5, it should show up here. How many companies do you get that fulfill this criteria? 484 out of how many? How many stocks are listed? 7,000, 7,500, maybe 8,000. So we can say that a minority of stocks is listed and makes money. Now you can look through the ticker list and you can ask yourself which companies have been listed for a long time. General Dynamics, yes. Textron, Yes, Northrop Grumman, yes, these are all defense companies. There's your ADM, which is stock in play today, Archer Daniels, right? It's been listed for a while. Maybe Nike, you can say, yeah, it's been listed for a while, right? 
And then you go through here. KDP, right? Dr. Pepper Coke, right? Here's DuPont, right? Eastman Chemical, right? These kind of companies. I've listed for a long time. Dow, chemical companies, right? International paper, it's a company that's been around for a long time. I'm not even mentioning stuff like Dollar Tree, right? They really took off with their business over the last few years, right? But if you really found, or, or IMAX cinemas, you know, it's just fairly new. I'm looking at stuff that's 20, 30 years old, maybe dollar snacks or something, right? There's not that many. There's not that many. Here's Procter and Gamble or Church and Dwight. Maybe Johnson Controls, right? GE. And then it will load more down here, but we don't need to do it. Like a lot of these companies, they are fairly new, right? Relatively new. There are very few companies, you know, that have been out there and profitable for 20 years. Very few. So going public in the stock market is a golden handshake for most companies. They just collect the money. And the Chinese did that in a, let, let, let me just phrase this carefully, in a questionable way, probably with the intent to say, we just want to squeeze out the money with this IPO and what happens afterwards, we don't care. And this is ex exactly what, you know, Chinese modern capitalistic thinking is like. To say, um, I, I don't care about the consequences. I want to get rich. I want to seize the opportunity, right? And everything that, that follows, everything that comes later, I don't care about. I don't care about the environment. I don't care about other people. You know, I don't care about damage done to Joe Blow's uh, retirement account. I don't care about these things. I just want the money. That's, that's Chinese thinking. It's very simple. So you cannot trust... Chinese companies and their auditing and their intentions, their reporting and whatever, you just can. And this is the end result, right? They all ran into it until 2021. And then the whole thing started collapsing and it's it's dead. It's just dead. Okay, there was a rant about China, so no China stocks for me. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And um, again, I, I don't see much to do today. I'll be very, very careful. Um, probably not going to do much. So I don't expect any quick reversals or anything. There's just no news. Um, this can be a very chop day, grinding up. And that's pretty much it. All right. Take care, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.